What's up guys and welcome back to episode 3 of the uh, Build It Unit Race It series that I've started. Uh, again we're back at Laguna Seca in the Mazda MX-5. In the last episode I went over gears and uh, showed you briefly how I set my gear ratios up and uh, what I do and how I change them from stock settings to how I like to uh, have my gear set up. Um, if you've missed that I'll uh, put that annotation on screen now and you can click on that and uh, follow that one. Um, this episode we're going to be covering suspension and how I set my suspension up. Um, from the last video, all I've changed in the gear ratio slightly is fifth gear. I'm going to extend it a little bit. Fourth gear, I'm going to extend it a little bit. Just two notches. Uh, sixth gear, we don't really get into six, so I've left that where it is. So that's the only change I've made from the gear ratios from the previous episode. So uh, check that out, guys. So uh, suspension. Right. When it comes to suspension, I usually tune my cars with soft springs and stiff roll bars. So you can see at the moment we've got 536 on the front and 527 on the rear. So what, we're going to, what I'm going to do personally is I'm going to take uh, a bit of uh, stiffness out of those suspension springs. Um, the car's got a little bit of uh, oversteer coming out the corners, so I'm going to lower the rear more than the lower the front as well. Uh, so to start off with, we're, I'm going to take about a hundred pound off the front. So I'll take that down to four three six, and I'm going to take about a hundred and about a hundred and fifty off the rear. So that'll give me three eighty ish. So these are only rough settings. I'm going to do a little uh, apply these ones. Do a few laps. Have a look see how it uh, feel how it handles and then make some more adjustments from there. Ride height, uh, for this track there's quite a bit of elevation change on this uh, and as we've lowered the springs as well, if we uh, drop the ride height all the way we're going to be bottom, bottoming out on a few corners. Um, so I'm just going to knock that down to 5.3 uh, front and rear. Uh, so we'll apply that and uh, we'll take the matter for a little spin round and uh, see how she handles. So yeah, with the uh, with the gear change I've made for this episode, um, I found that coming towards this corner on a flying lap, I was uh, just hitting the limit to him fifth. So hopefully by extending fourth and fifth slightly, it'll uh, help reduce that and we won't have that problem. I'll put the uh, telemetry up as well, so you can see these uh, suspension settings and uh, how it's all working and uh, where we're bottom bottoming out. Uh, that's what we've got to look for. Anytime that turns red, is uh, going to be a problem for us. But hopefully we shouldn't have it at that too many places on this track. Uh, the corkscrew is probably going to be the worst. Um, but I think that's pretty much for any car. Uh, it's hard to eliminate it on this track with uh, that severe elevation change on that part of the track. So hopefully uh, when we do a few flying laps we can um, improve our time slightly. Uh, we did a 37.95 I think it was on the uh, when we just added the build and then in the last episode we did a 137.92 by altering the gear ratios um, so we've made a slight improvement uh, nothing major but as a bonus we haven't made the car any worse either so um, pretty much set it up for how I like to drive it see a little bit of red down the suspension as we went through that corner So to the last corner, let's try and get a good drive out of this one so we can set a decent time for the, uh, for the lap. It's not the telemetry off so we can see what sort of lap time we're going to get on this and uh, how it's going to fare. So that's uh, so all we've done is just change the base settings for the suspension at the moment. Uh, as I say, I like to have soft suspension and hard anti-roll bars. Um, obviously a lot of people tune different ways, some people have stiff uh, suspension. But for this track, that's how I, uh, how I like to set it up. Not getting any over, or we'll get such a baby steer still on the rear, but um, we can uh, make a few adjustments for that after the finish line lap. If anything, we get a bit of understeer on mid corner now, but we can. Uh, address that with the uh, anti-roll bars, which I may touch on in this episode, I'll go into more depth in the next one. So 
so even the car, even though the car bottoms out on that part of the track, uh, it doesn't unsettle it anyway. Doesn't we don't lose the front, we don't lose the rear, so uh, we can pretty much handle that and cope with that. Let's see uh, if we've made it better or made it worse. Hopefully, it's going to be better. Exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same. But uh, we're giving it one, and I'll shut up and concentrate on this one. So what sort of time I can get. That's not going to help. So let's see what sort of time I get now. A bit more concentration for me. You know, I messed up one corner. So we've got 37.4. So we've, uh, we've knocked half a second off with those slight adjustments. And a mess one corner up as well, so hopefully we can knock a little bit more time off. Um, so, let's have a look at the suspension settings again. So, yeah, we've got them at, uh, there we go, there we've got it, 436 and 380 for the rear. Um, you want to be paying attention to how the car exits the corner and enters the corner. If you want it to be a bit, bit more responsive, um, then increase the uh, stiffness of the spring slightly. Um, at the moment, for me, it's not too bad. Um, it turning in when I want it to. Uh, like I say, we're just getting a bit of uh, oversteer now and again on the rear. Uh, and all, as always, with tuning, you always fix the rear where uh, you always fix the end that's got the problem. So if you're oversteering and losing the back end, then make adjustments to the rear of the car. If you're understeering, then make adjustments to the front of the car. So for this, we're going to knock another 10 off this. Well, let's knock another 20 off. Get that down to 360. Leave the right height as it is. Have another drive round. Still getting a bit of that oversteer, uh, understeer mid corner. Well, so we can uh, we can address that when we come to the uh, the roll bars, which I'm going to uh, touch on briefly on this. Now before we start the next hot lap. So uh, yeah, with the anti-roll bars, like I say, I have soft springs and uh, stiff anti-roll bars. So with this one, uh, we're going to increase the stiffness slightly. Um, what was it on before? 28.6 was it? So we'll put that up to um, 32.6. We're going to add uh, 4 onto that. And then the rear, if we add 4 as well, that takes it up to 26.9. And then we were suffering from oversteer, from understeering the corners as well. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the gap between the, the difference between the front and the rear on the roll bars. So we'll drop that down slightly, and we'll increase that slightly as well. I'm just guessing the state there is no method. I don't need any calculations or anything like that. It's just trial and error. Try it if it works. Bonus if not. Go back to it and adjust it a little bit more. So we'll see how it feels now in a few of these corners. 
There's a chance before we do another flying lap. That feels a lot better already. Even just making them uh, slight alterations. I'll, uh, I'll sit up for a minute or so and uh, try and get a good fast lap in. And uh, see what sort of time I get in now. So we've got 37.4 so far. Hopefully we can take a little bit more off that with the uh, new changes we've made to the springs and uh, the anti roll bar. Mess that last corner up a little bit, so I'm going to lose a bit of time there. Thirty-seven three, so we've gone even with that last corner, we've gone a little bit faster than before. Let's see if we can get it down even more. What we'll do is still got a bit of understeer mid corner, so um, we we'll increase that by three, jump four, thirty two, so thirty five two, and by the increase, increase that by three, we'll increase that by four, thirty four nine. Three nine, a little bit wild then. So yeah, so we reduce the difference between the front and the rear anti roll bars now, which should give us a bit more uh, oversteer in the corner. Let's see how this goes now with the uh, mid corner and uh, entrance and exit of the corner. So you can see we're getting a bit of oversteer again coming out of the corner since we've changed anti roll bars. So what we can do is what I usually find helpful as well is if you increase that one, so if you change if you decrease the gap between the front anti roll bar and the rear anti roll bar, you make the gap smaller, then whatever you add to the rear, so we've increased the rear, we're gonna take off the rear on the spring. So we're on what was we on three sixty five. So if we take pounds off that. So we've added to the rear anti-roll bars and taken away from the rear springs. So 
so we'll have uh, another flying lap now. I'll shoot up again and uh, try and put a fast time for you. See where we're at. Just another, th another 37.3, so the car's pretty consistent at the moment. Somewhere we've managed to dirt this lap, not too sure which corner it was on, but we've got a 36 9. So uh, that's a pretty big improvement. I was hoping to get below 37 for this episode. Um, so that's uh, worked out quite well. So far, by changing the springs and the anti roll bar slightly, we've managed to knock a second off the, uh, off the time so far. And with a bit more practice, and a better lap, I can probably knock a little bit more off as well. So um, that's going to be quite good. I do feel that the uh, anti-roll bars could be a bit too stiff though. So for taking a bit off both. So for the front anti-roll bar, I'm going to try taking off. First of all, I'm going to save this setting so I don't lose it. Because I tend to do that quite a lot: is change stuff and then make the car worse, and then not not have saved the setting so that. Uh, doesn't help me whatsoever so uh, if you find something that works don't forget to save your settings a little stick tip for you um, so yeah we'll knock um, we'll try knocking three off boats so we'll take that down to 32.20 yeah 32.20 and we'll knock three off that so down to 30.90 let's see what difference that's made a lot to do with tuning with me is for an error. I don't use calculators, I don't do these sums or anything like that, I just tune it by the feel. Oh, that's not liking that at all. Um, maybe that's my driving, but we'll, uh, we'll get a few more corners and see how it works out. Yeah, that's, that's a, the, a slight adjustment has totally unsettled the car. Um, and it's uh, not loving it around this track at the minute with these settings, which is a good reason why I saved the previous one. So I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll load the old settings up. So yeah, that's um, that's not too bad for this episode. We managed to knock a second off the lap time so far, just by adjusting the uh, suspension and uh, the anti-roll bars. Uh, like I say, with a bit more practice, I could probably knock a little bit more off as well. Um, but if you guys want to follow this as well and follow the first episode with the gears, um, let me know what you find out as well if it works for you, or any suggestions how you tune your suspension and your anti-roll bars. Feel free to leave them in the comment below, uh, the comment box, and uh, I'll read them and get back to you. Um, and that pretty much brings episode 3 to a conclusion. 
So as always guys, if you enjoyed this and you want to see a lot more of this sort of stuff, then uh, hit the like button below, leave me a comment, share it. And um, until next time guys, I'll see you.